Hey everybody, so we're going to be talking about isosceles and equilateral triangle theorems. Um, before we get started, I'm going to have you guys add in some tick marks, right? And these are congruency marks that should be there, but I can't put them in when I make this. I know, sad story. Alrighty, so now we can actually get started with our notes. Isosceles and equilateral triangle theorem. So the first one we're going to do is the isosceles triangle theorem. If two sides of a triangle are congruent, then the angles opposite those sides are congruent. So pretty much because we know that this one is an isosceles triangle, this angle right here, it's kind of pointing at it. That's the opposite triangle angle to, the, that's the opposite angle to this side in that triangle, sorry. And so it's congruent with this other one that is opposite to its congruent side. All right. And so that's why I also made you guys put in those black marks because you needed them. All right, so then the converse of the isosceles triangle theorem, it says same thing, but in the reverse order. Remember, you're just changing the order. Your conclusion becomes your hypothesis. And if two angles of a triangle are congruent, then the sides opposite those angles are congruent as well. The same thing, see? It's literally staring at it and pointing at it. Same thing, right there. If you've got those two base angles being congruent, then the legs of that isosceles triangle are also going to be congruent, and that's how you'll be able to tell it's an isosceles. All right, next up, we've got the vertex angle bisector theorem. So if a line bisects the vertex angle of an isosceles triangle, then the line is also the perpendicular bisector of the base. So pretty much what that means Okay, um, we know this is an isosceles triangle. So using our isosceles triangle theorem, we know these angles are congruent as well. So you can mark it up. Now, using the vertex angle bisector theorem, what's happening is we are going to take this angle right here and split it. And when you split it right down and it bisects it, it's going to fall to the base at a right angle creating also two, because it's a bisector, two congruent angles as well there. All right, guess what? That isosceles triangle theorem has corollaries. And then the corollary has a converse too. I know, it's a little intense. So get this, if a triangle is equilateral, then the triangle is also equiangular. And think about it, it's pointing to that angle, pointing to this angle, pointing to this angle because they're all congruent with each other. The reverse, the converse of this corollary is also true, where if a triangle is equiangular, then the triangle is equilateral. So I can point to it and make a line here because it's congruent. This one is also congruent, and I can make a line, and another from here. Pretty much, equilateral triangles are also equiangular triangles, and that's going to be part of your definition from now on. 
All right, so now let's go ahead and try for some examples. And we're gonna be using some of these theorems and kind of applying what we did yesterday as well. So first one we're gonna do is we're gonna solve for x. And this one, you look at it in your brain and you're just like, um, I don't know if I can do this, but you can. So think about it this way and look at it one triangle at a time. So I'm gonna look at this triangle here first. All right, so two, we know because these angles are congruent, we know that their opposite sides are also congruent. Awesome. So that means this is also 2x plus 5. Well, that's cool. Hmm. Can't solve there. Let's look at our next triangle. Alrighty, so... Now, we've got, let's see, these two angles are congruent, therefore these, oh, this angle is opposite this side, but this side is also congruent with this one, which means they are both congruent. And if this one is congruent with this one, which that's the case because of our angles, that means we can write our equation to be 2x plus 5 equals 3x minus 13 because of the same side that we are sharing. And that's using that reflexive property, remember, from yesterday. So now you just got to solve for x. I moved my lighter x and I got 5 equals 3x minus 13. Add, oops. Just an x. Because I moved that 2x by subtracting it. And then I'm going to add the 13. And I get 18 equals x, which really just means that x is 18. And it was really that easy. It looked hard, but once you break it down by triangle by triangle, bit by bit, you can do this. Let's do the next one. All right. Okay. Hmm. Oh, so we've got some congruency marks. Let's use these. This one goes with this and this. Which means that this one is also 3x plus 8. Well, now that I know each of these three, I can use my triangle sum theorem, and I can add up all of these sides... Oops. And I'll know that it ends up equaling 180. So combine your like terms first. 3x plus 3x plus 2x gets you 8x. 8 plus 8, 16 plus 20 gets you 36. That equals 180. Subtract the 36, you get 8x equals 144. And then your x is equal to 18. That's it. Um, it. The fact that both of them equaled 18, pure coincidence. Slash, you know, I was just feeling the number 18 today. So, thanks for watching.